Live service games. Nothing scarier oh than boy. that. It feels like all of the live service games coming out right now are made in a second and are instantly forgotten due to how they were made to please shareholders instead of making an actual good game that will please gamers. But what if there was a live service game where this was never the case? A small horror game that slowly picked up IPs and characters to add to its game until it was the face of horror video games. Starting off like a little snowball and slowly the longer it went on getting bigger and bigger until it was barreling through its competition. Where am I going with this metaphor? I have no idea because I don't know how to plan things out even in a script, but the developers of behavior absolutely know how to strategically plan this game from being a tiny little game to being a juggernaut. Through that care and passion, they created not only the best multiplayer horror game, but one of my favorite multiplayer games full stop. So this is why, eight years later, Dead by Daylight is the only horror game that will never die. If it's not fun, why bother? Dead by Daylight is a survival horror game where you play as a survivor with three teammates and you must complete five generators to get the exit gate open so you can escape. The problem is there's a killer hunting you down you must run away from them, avoiding your death while also desperately trying to escape. Now on a premise alone, this is great. It allows for there to be genuine skill and fun gameplay on both sides while also perfectly capturing that cat and mouse aspect of horror. And for your first 20 games, Dead by Daylight can genuinely be scary to play. <laughs> Whether it's the music from the villains or the jump scares of seeing a villain you've never seen before, every game is different and you have no idea what to expect. And that's one of my favorite factors that continues from the early game to the late game, and that is, the game is just super replayable. Dead by Daylight is basically different in every match. You got 39 maps, 33 killers, and 40 different survivors. Each game is different and the gameplay, while repetitive, for me at least it's always fun. The dynamic of doing generators might be boring for some people, but I still find the tension of the killer coming around the corner still puts me on edge. And the gameplay loop, while pretty simple, over 100 hours in, it's still extremely fun. And the craziest part of the game is that after you get used to playing as a survivor, you realize there's basically an entire different game when you look at all the killers you can play, and how playing as killer is basically a different game mode. Now what we got here is an Ewok Hunt conundrum, which is when you buy a game for one game mode in mind and then realize that the other game mode is way more fun than what you originally bought the game for. This happened in Battlefront 2 with Ewok Hunt, and it happens in Dead by Daylight when you realize playing as killer is way more fun. Just the amount of variety and different killers you're able to play with all their different abilities is so fun. They never feel fully overpowered, but as you zoom between generator to generator picking off survivors, it is so satisfying. And when you get to dominate a match to the point where you get to let one person leave on your own because you feel bad, ooh! The power trip is insane. And there's so much variety for all 33 killers, it's crazy that Dead by Daylight of all games has the most amount of pop culture horror villains in any video game. Other than like Fortnite, but I don't know if that counts. Just like Thanos, Dead by Daylight has been collecting horror infinity stones. The game initially just came out as a horror game with all original killers and all original survivors. But it wasn't until Miguel Myers came bumbling into frame that the game changed for the better. Ever since then, Dead by Daylight has been adding original characters alongside pop culture icons into the game. The reason I even got into the game was during 2019 during the Stranger Things update. That was the first time I ever heard of the game and most people get into this game for the characters they love and then end up sticking around for the great gameplay and consistent updates. Dead by Daylight by consistently adding a new killer every three months has kept the game constantly alive and those new characters are always bringing in new players. Look at their last three updates, a new survivor with Alan Wake and then Chucky and the Xenomorph as killers. Those are three huge names when it comes to horror video games and movies. And it's no wonder why the game even 8 years in is still thriving when it's adding characters of that magnitude. Now, but with all that, I do have to mention that this is DLC. The shoe that eventually drops when you're talking about this game is yes, all of the new characters that come out are paid DLC. Now while I have to preface that these killers, especially the licensed ones, cost real money, they're usually always on sale. That also goes for the base game. Usually on Steam, the base game of Dead by Daylight is usually 7 bucks, and it's free on Game Pass, so you're basically already getting into the game completely free, and DLC characters are usually only 2 to 3 dollars when they're on sale, and about 5 or 6 dollars regularly. And all of the original made killers for Dead by Daylight you are able to earn in the game. So while it would be nice for there to be an in-way game to be able to earn the licensed killers and characters, which is something I do think behavior should look at, I don't think you can really be mad for how much content you're getting on such a low entry fee. This isn't a $70 game asking for 60 bucks for each DLC that comes out. <laughs> it's basically just a 5 
$5 upgrade every three months for a new killer. But what behavior nails though is that balance for free to play players as well. If you don't buy these killers, you're still gonna be able to play against all of them if you're a survivor. And the maps as well that come with all of the characters are completely free to play to all players. So while there are definitely practices that I wish behavior would get rid of like how much their item shop costs and how they are making you have to pay real money for cool characters like Michael Myers and Ghostface, I also recognize how much they could be nickel and diming their consumers for maps, killers, and perks. So while there are definitely problems for Dead by Daylight's monetary scheme, I do think overall it's in a much healthier place as a live service game and much less predatory than a lot of its contemporaries. And that consumer focused design has led to the game continuing to be a huge success and that's how Dead by Daylight is a game that at the end of the day prioritizes quality releases of characters and maps that consistently improve the game. And that balance of consistently putting out a new character or a new survivor every three months while also having them be really fun and really shake up the gameplay while also not destroying the meta usually is really impressive and the fact that a lot of people don't have to buy the new killer to be able to enjoy it makes this a live service game you're able to return to consistently even if you're not buying all the DLC and I think that's why this is one of the few live service service games that never feels predatory. Just like the horror films that inspired it, it seemed that Dead by Daylight was made out of love by a smaller crew initially only having 30 developers. A group of people that genuinely had a passion for translating the world of mainstream horror to a living and breathing game. And while there are lots of flaws, the commitment to constantly improving this game and the lack of huge scandals and practices makes this one of the easiest games to rally behind. Through its fun and unique gameplay to constantly changing and evolving itself, adding new characters constantly that that fans want to see, it's no surprise that this game became a huge success. Through building itself up over the last eight years, carefully piece by piece, it isn't a question why this game just can't seem to die even eight years later. <laughs>